Welcome back to MPT. Today I'm going to show why it is critically important that the specifications of the LNB or low noise block match the requirements of the rest of your system. I'm going to show five critical specifications for low, no low noise blocks. So be sure to watch to the end and download the white paper I've linked below. It provides more details about LNBs, a typical block diagram, and gives a table of typical LNB requirements. Get your product to market faster with a custom phased array solution from MPT Corp. LNBs are a vital part of most satellite communication system. Though you may not realize it, you and most everyone else has seen one. This is because the familiar satellite television antenna that you see on people's homes has an LNB attached to it. If you look closely at the typical dish antenna, you'll notice a small box attached to the side of the dish. That's the LNB. It turns out the LNBs are very common in satellite communication systems and are also used in satellite dish and phased arrays. A simplified block diagram of a SATCOM system shows that the LNB exists between the antenna and the modem. It provides the function of converting the signals at the frequency range of the satellite to the required frequency range of the modem. As you can see, the LNB is critically important to a SATCOM system. As with any high-tech item, the LNB is characterized by several crucial specifications. I will describe five of them, and if you don't get these things right, then you run the risk of your SATCOM system failing. The first and most obvious specification is the operating frequency of the LNB. The LNB must operate in the same frequency range as the satellite. This means that an LNB that operates at C-band cannot be used for a KU-band satellite. The LNB frequency must exactly match the frequency of the satellite downlink. The second most Im important specification for the LNB is its noise figure. This is because the noise figure of the LNB is one of the parameters that sets the sensitivity of the whole SATCOM system. Lower noise figure is better. If you get the noise figure specification wrong, then the data rate of your link will suffer. You will have unhappy customers since they will have poor internet speeds. The third most important LNB specification is gain. This is because the satellite signal must travel many thousands of miles from the satellite to reach your antenna. For example, a geostationary satellite has an altitude that's 36,000 kilometers from the surface of the Earth, or 22,000 miles. By the time the signal reaches your satellite phased array, it's very weak. The LNB must amplify that signal, and the amplification is called gain. Typical gain for an LNB is 50 to 60 dB. The fourth most critical parameter is gain variation. The LNB must not only provide magnitude of gain, the variation of the gain over operating frequency range must also be controlled. Typically, the gain variation is tightly controlled down to plus or minus 2 dB over the whole operating frequency range of the LNB, and that includes temperature variations. The fifth most important LNB specification is its intermediate frequency, also called its IF. It must match the input frequency to your modem. If it does not, then your modem will not be able to be received through satellite signals. In conclusion, as you can see, it's critically important that the specifications of the LNB match the requirements of the rest of your system. If your LNB isn't properly specified and designed, then you're gonna have unhappy customers since their data rate will suffer. In this video, we touched on only five of the most important, but there are many other specifications that you need to be concerned about. And some are more important and some are less important, but we can only touch on five here. Nevertheless, it should be clear from this video 
that a proper LNB specification requires the analysis of the complete system. This includes a link budget simulation, LNB gain distribution, and noise figure analyses, third order intercept gain, gain compression, and other simulations. In other words, a proper LNB specification requires serious engineering from experts in the field, such as the team here at MPT. Next, download the white paper I've linked below. It provides more details about LNBs, a typical block diagram of an LNB, and gives a table of typical LNB requirements. If you're in the market for an LNB or phased array, discuss your product with us. MPT and its expanding line of LMB and phased array solutions is ready to make your product a success for you. Visit our website, which is chock full of solutions for your phased array and LMB needs. Until next time, this is Rick Sturdivant with MPT.